Defending America from the weapons of mass deception. Welcome back to the Tom Hartman program. And I'm super happy to have on the line with me uh, Howard Epstein, or Epstein, the British historian, attorney, uh, author of Guns, Traumas, and Exceptionalism, America in the 21st Century. And uh, Howard, welcome to the program. Hi, Tom. Thank you very much. It's a great uh, pleasure and honor. Thank you for joining us. So you ask, you ask this question, do we need a national program to wean young men from thinking that guns can solve their problems? Is, I, how, how, do, how is it that American young men think this is, uh, the guns will solve their problems? Well, what I mean by that is uh, there comes a point in the lives of some young men when they pick up a gun and they go crazy with it as though that would solve anything. And of course, it never does. Yeah. causes mayhem and uh, tragedy. So uh, what are, you know, the, the, the blurb for your book says that you offer practical suggestions for solving gun violence in the U.S. Uh, what suggestions have you, sir? Well, I, I um, looked at uh, supporting gun control, which I see to be failing, with an approach through gun culture. And I saw that America has suffered more national traumas than any other culturally similar country. Yes. And America has a higher rate of um, homicide by firearms than any other similar country. Suicide by firearms, too. I made a connection yeah. and decided to investigate it. Uh, and I listed 20 national traumas from the Wall Street crash through to the credit crunch. Mm -hmm. And amongst them was Columbine. And when I really looks into Columbine, I could see several lessons, which I think very few other outrages will teach. Uh, for example, uh, the, the, uh, the two boys at Columbine made a movie entitled Hitmen for Hire and showed it in the school. Nobody picked up on it. Mm. They'd been in trouble with the local police. Nobody picked up on that either. The Brady checks didn't operate to prevent them from acquiring their actually rather fearsome weapons. And it's clear that where psychopaths have a desire to acquire guns, they will in the USA all too easily find a way, and apparently to the surprise of few. They also placed explosive devices all around the school grounds, but mercifully they failed to detonate, mm. showing that where other killing methods may fail, the gun will not. Right, and guns are... Versus... Look at other similar tragedies, Sandy Hook and Virginia Tech, and I could see the dots not being joined up. Yeah. And I could see from the national traumas that American society, and I'm not the first to say this, many more uh, learned people than I have said it, uh, American society suffers from PTSD. Yeah, in a, in a, in a bunch of dimensions. Uh, you know, we still have PTSD from the way that George W. Bush hyped 9-11 for years. Um, I'm, I'm curious book. how gun control works in other countries. How does it, for example, in Great Britain, how does gun control work? Guns are just not present in uh, UK society. They're just not there. They're not there in European countries. America is unique in this way. Gun is, the gun is central. You were talking about the Constitution a few minutes ago. The British take pr pride in uh, Thomas Paine's contribution to the revolution. Uh, and we're aware of what goes on in America. The gun is central. It's, it's an icon. Uh, the all-American guy, the cowboy, John Wayne, all these all these symbols are very important and play on the American psyche. And at the same time, American society has been pounded by these terrible traumas, the death of JFK, Martin Luther King, uh, and uh, uh, the um, shooting at um, the uh, university. The name escapes me for a minute. Several, in fact. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the only one. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on this. If you look at if you look at Western Europe and the UK, um, it was roughly 3,000 years ago that the Celts swept through there and, and you know, destroyed most of the indigenous tribes, did away with all, some of the languages. They allowed people to keep their languages, by and large, uh, and their religions. But, um, but that was, you know, there were no guns then. It was done by sword and, and you know, horseback and whatnot. And then 2,000 years ago, the Catholics swept across Europe and, 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 you know, consolidated languages and religion and all that. But again, they didn't have guns. And so the conquest of Europe, essentially by what we would call, you know, modern Caucasian Europeans, uh, was accomplished without guns. On the other hand, here in, in North America, 
uh, Europeans came here with guns and found an Aboriginal society, or uh, you know, hundred, literally hundreds of tribes all across the, uh, what we now call the United States, across North America. Uh, many of them living in peace, some of them living in states of conflict, and uh, you know, we proceeded to 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 go on a 150 year long binge of exterminating the indigenous people in North America, and the principal weapon used to do that was guns. Um, is is that why America has this unique gun culture and the rest of Europe doesn't? Uh, that, that Europe's principal uh, interaction with guns has been during World Wars One and Two, and that was pretty horrific. The uh, United States hasn't had a war on its, you know, on an, within the United States since the Civil War. Uh, I, well, you, you touch on the uh, Civil War. The War of Independence also saw the gun very central to uh, yeah. what was going on there. Thomas Paine couldn't have won the War of Independence. It was the gun that won it and that drove the British out. Uh, then you mentioned the Civil War. We know how awful that, that was as well. And the, and the conquering of the West and, and as you say, um, what uh, happened to the American, uh, the indigenous American Indians uh, was tragic. Uh, rich cultures uh, that no longer exist, really, and the gun was the was the facilitator of this. But of course, the gun needs someone to pull the trigger. Right. And sadly, as, as I've discovered from my researchers, uh, America has a unique propensity to use guns and to inflict large-scale violence. But is that is that the consequence of the gun industry looking at American gun nuts as as profit centers and and promoting the so-called gun gun culture, or is that the consequence of uh, you know uh, 400 years of death and destruction from the destruction of the Native Americans to slavery, all enforced by the gun, and you know that kind of seeping into American culture? I mean, why is it that the United States is like this? I. Uh as I say, I think it's a traumatized society, but what mm. I tried to do was see if there was a route out of it. I don't think there's going to be a cure. Mm -hmm. I think there are palliatives. I think there are ameliorative steps that can be taken. For example? And uh, I, I haven't found anyone else. So lots of people have written about trauma and um, warning signs and joining dots, but nobody's come up with some of the suggestions that I have in my book. Right. So your suggestion is that we change, rather than change our guns, we change our culture. Do I have that right? Well, I wouldn't seek to change the whole of American culture, but um, I will say this. I haven't, I've sought not to make an enemy of either the NRA or very, people very much on the left wing. What I've come up with is something that is uh, politically, if you like, with a small p, quite anodyne. Mm -hmm. The idea would be to have uh, committees in uh, statewide or in uh, major cities that would look at anonymized uh, track records of kids. And where there's a kid that has a trajectory which indicates from past experience, he could sooner or later end up by grabbing hold of somebody's gun and killing several people in their rampage killing, then there could be uh, an application to a judge uh, to re remove the anonymity and benign intervention to try and help this kid away from the path of violence. So and, catch the uh, catch the uh, the killers before they kill, basically. Uh, get hold of them before they kill. Yes, I didn't catch your verb. What was it? Well, I, I just said catch the killers, but I guess it's not literally catch. It would be more like identify and help the killers before they kill. That's right. Yeah, that's that's a remarkable concept, and and that 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 whole kind of preventative concept is something that seems baked into European culture with the precautionary principle and everything, and is the antithesis of American culture, which is you know ready shoot aim. Uh, but I've borrowed ideas from all sorts of places. For example, in the UK, a teacher who sees that a kid is being radicalized has a statutory duty to report that kid, and then there's benign intervention in the UK. Yeah, that should be the same here. British historian, author, and attorney uh, Howard Epstein. Hang on just a second here, Howard. This is the Tom Hartman Program. He's the author of a new book, Guns, Traumas, and Exceptionalism, America in the 21st Century. Howard, thank you for being with us today. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. Good talking. We'll be back.